the rocks of which the earth is made, are forever being attacked by the wind, rain, snow and ice. Through long periods of time, they are broken down into dust. This dust is carried away by the rivers. The rivers lead to the sea. In the sea, the rock particles sink to the bottom. In certain ages, very large numbers of the dead bodies of tiny sea creatures fell and were buried in the layers of mud at the bottom of the sea. As the layers of mud were compressed into layers of rock, it is believed that the remains of the tiny sea creatures turned into oil. The oil, in the form of liquid and gas, moved upwards where the rocks were porous and sometimes it escaped. But in other places, a layer of non-porous rock lay over the porous rocks and there the oil and gas were trapped. But in such a formation, the oil would be spread over a very large area. This early stage in the formation of an oil field might have been reached some 50 million years ago, when the earth was very different. But the earth is always changing. are signs of the immense forces at work in the earth. But besides these sudden movements, the earth's crust is always being subjected to gigantic slow movements. You cannot see these movements any more than you can see the hour hand of a clock moving. The important earth movements are very much slower than the clock hand. But in many thousands of generations, mountains are built and the flat beds of rock that were laid down at the bottom of the vanished seas may be gradually folded. There are many places in northern Iraq where we can see that this has happened. The rocks have been twisted and bent, sometimes gently, sometimes violently. In some places, great masses of rock, layer on layer, have been folded into arches or domes. Immensely speeded up, a folding movement might look something like this. It might result in the formation of a dome, which would give this sort of cross-section. What happens to oil and water when they are trapped in porous rocks which have been folded? We know that oil and water do not mix. The oil floats on the water. This beaker is filled with small beads. It's an enlarged model of a porous rock. This is oil. This is water. See how the oil makes its way up and floats on the top of the water.
In folded layers of porous rock, oil and water will not lie like this, all mixed together, as we can show by using a transparent model of a folded layer of porous rock. We will connect the model to this simple apparatus, which will allow oil and water to flow together. The oil always floats on top of the water. And at the very top of the fold may be gas floating on the oil. In a dome, if gas, water and oil are present, they will lie like this. The gas will be at the top, then the oil, then the water. It is most likely that oil in commercial quantities will be found in a dome structure, something like this. For it is in domes that the oil will be concentrated. We are now only looking at the oil as it lies in a cross section of a dome. Let's turn it round and see how the oil layer is spread throughout the porous rock. By adding more pieces, we can make the complete dome. We can take the model to pieces in a different way, removing the domes made by each layer of rock one by one. Eventually, we reach the cap rock. And in the dome of porous rock beneath it, the oil lies trapped. See how it lies, with a cap of gas on top and water underneath. To find oil, we must find these domes. But finding domes is not a simple matter. Remember how rocks at the surface are always being worn away. The part of a dome which sticks out above the ground will be worn away. A river has cut a great gorge through this one, and the top part of it has been worn away by the slower action of the wind and the rain. One of the biggest domes in Iraq is the Jebel Mahul, and from the air we can see how its top has been cut about by the long continued onslaught of the weather. Another great Iraqi dome is a Jambur. This one has been almost flattened, so that only long, low ridges of rock are left showing through the soil. The soil itself is composed of particles worn from the rocks of the great dome. But most of them have been carried away by the rain and the rivers. From the ground, 
The top of a dome is often quite hard to see. And some domes cannot be seen at all. There is a buried dome under this desert. Domes were buried when the sea returned or remained after the folding movement had been completed. Rivers brought mud. The mud sank to the bottom of the sea. Grains of rock settled over the dome and became rock layers. At last the dome was quite buried below layer upon layer of flat rocks. When the sea disappeared, it left a great area of flat land. But underneath this flat land were rocks folded into ranges of underground mountains. Folded rocks in which oil might lie trapped. In the north of Iraq, there are many rocks at the surface. But in the south, all the folded rocks are completely buried beneath layers of flat rock and topsoil. It is mainly in domes that there is a chance of finding oil. So men have devised many ways of finding domes.